This is Voice Upon a Time with Lord Tracy. Well, you've no doubt heard about gunfighting guys like Wild Bill Hiccup and Wyatt Earp. But I'm fixing to tell you a name that strikes even greater fear in the hearts of bad men everywhere. Lightning Larry. <gasps> i never forget the day Larry rode into our little town of Brimstone, walked into the Cotton Mouth Saloon. He strode up to the bar and smiled straight at the bartender. Lemonade, please. Ever head in the place turned to look. Now, standing next to Larry at the bar was Crooked Kurt. Kurt was one of a band of rustlers and thieves that had been terrorizing the town led by a ferocious outlaw named Evil Eye McNeville. Kurt was wearing the usual outlaw scowl. Larry turned to him and smiled. Mighty big frown you got there, mister. What's it to you? growled Kurt. Well, said Larry, maybe I could help remove it. I'd like to see you try. The rest of us got out of the way real fast. The bartender ducked behind the bar. Larry and Kurt moved about ten paces from each other, hands at the ready. Larry was a-smiling. Kurt moved first, but he'd only just cleared his gun from its holster before Larry aimed and fired. There was no bang, no bullet, just a little bolt of lightning that hit Kurt right in the old heart. Kurt just stood there, his eyes wide with surprise. Then he dropped his gun, and a huge grin spread over his face. He rushed up to Larry and pumped his hand. Well, I'm mighty glad to know you, stranger. The drinks are on me. Lemonade for everybody. When Evil Eye McNeville and his outlaw gang heard that Crooked Kurt had gone straight, they shuddered right down in their boots. Most any outlaw would rather die than smile. Evil Eye's men were shook up, but they weren't going to let on. The very next day, Dismal Dan, Devilish Dick, and Dreadful Dave rode into Brimstone, yelling like crazy men, shooting wild and a-hooting and a-hollering, Winder shattered and citizens scattered. Then Lightning Larry showed up. He never warned them, never even stopped smiling. Just shot three little bolts of light. Hit them outlaws right in the old heart. Larry's shots knocked the outlaws down to the ground. They lay there trying to figure out what had hit them. Then they got up and looked around. Looks like we did some damage, boys, said Dismal Dan. Hope nobody got hurt, said Devilish Dick. We better get to work and fix this place up, said Dreadful Dave. They spent the rest of the day replacing winter lights and apologizing to everybody to listen. Then, for good measure, they picked up the trash in the street. <laughs> Well, Evil Eye McNeville had lost three more of his meanest men, and by golly, he was mad. He decided he was going to do something real nasty. The next day, Stinky Steve and Sickening Sid walked into the 79th National Savings and Loan with their guns in their hands. They wore a mask, but everybody knowed who they was from the smell. Stick up your hands, said Stinky Steve. Give us all the money in your vault, ordered Sickening Sid. They were just backing out the door with the money bags when Lightning Larry strolled by. Didn't even slow his step. Just shot those bandits in the back. Went right through to the heart. Puzzled outlaws looked at each other. Seems a shame to steal the money from hard-working cowboys, said Stinking Steve. Wouldn't want to make their lives any harder, said Sickening Sid. They holstered their guns, walked back to the teller, and plunked down the money bags. Now you keep that money safe, said Sickening Sid. 
and they pulled out their wallets and opened them up an account. Well, that was the last straw for Evil Eye McNeville. It was time for a showdown. The next day at high noon, Larry was sipping lemonade at the Cottonmouth Saloon. Evil Eye burst through the door and stamped up to him. Mom, Evil Eye McNeville. Hello, Evil Eye, said Larry with a huge smile. Can I buy you a lemonade? Well, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Oh, I don't know, said Larry. Seems pretty spacious to me. I'll be waiting for you down by the okie dokie corral. An evil eye stamped out of there. Larry finished his lemonade and walked out onto Main Street. The evil eye was waiting for him. But the evil eye wasn't alone. There on the other side of him was Raunchy Ralph and Grimy Greg and Creepy Cal and Moldy Mike and Lousy Luke and Gruesome Gus. And not a one of them looked friendly. Nice day for a stroll, called Larry. Draw, said Evil Eye. All us citizens of Brimstone was lining Main Street to see what was aimed to happen there. Larry was still smiling, but we knew even Larry couldn't outshoot all them outlaws together. Just then a voice came out from the Cottonmouth Saloon. Like some help, Larry? Wouldn't mind it, Larry called back. Well, out stepped Crooked Kurt. Right behind him was Dismal Dan, Devilish Dick, Dreadful Dave, Stinky Steve, and Sickening Sid. And they all took the places right there beside Larry. Hello, Evil Eye, called Kurt. Traitors! yelled Evil Eye. Draw! said Larry with a smile. Evil Eye and his men drawed their guns, but Larry and his friends were a eye blink quicker. Their guns fired seven little boats of light. Hit them outlaws right there in a you know what. Yippee! yelled Evil Eye. He shot in the air. There was no bang, no bullet, just a little bolt of light. All right, men, shouted Larry. Let's clean up this town once and for all. And before we could duck for cover, Larry and Evil Eye and the others turned their guns on the rest of us. Boats of light flew out everywhere. No one was spared, not a man, woman, or child. Well, you never saw such a happy crowd. We all rushed around pumping each other's hands and hugging each other. Then the musicians got out their instruments and we started dancing too. Right there on Main Street was one big old huge party. All the rest of that day and on through the night. I never seen so much lemonade drunk in all my days. With all the commotion, only a few of us saw Larry ride out into the sunset. Can't say where he went. Can't say what he's doing now. But I'll bet he still aims for the heart. What a tale indeed. If you are new to our podcast, please be sure to subscribe on our website. Until we meet again, from Tracy Turner and all the gang at Voice Upon a Time, Pleasant Dreams.